All kinds of preparations are underway for next weekend's coronation of King Charles III. Seth Doan looks at one memorable way the people of Britain will ring in the big day. Rehearsals are underway. Pageantry requires perfection. State coaches are being readied as are uniforms of every stripe and there will be a fitting soundtrack. Ring for the King is a nationwide quest to have every bell in every church ringing for King Charles III on his coronation day. At Chalfont St. Giles Parish Church outside London, it means having a band of eight, each pulling a rope to ring a single massive bell, a form of ringing that dates back to the 1500s in the reign of Elizabeth I. I started when I was 15. Wow, that's a lot of practice. <laughs> Here, bell tower captain John Davidge leads the way. What do you think of this ring for the king effort? What do I think about it? It's privilege. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's shining light on something you've been doing for 70 years. Yeah, I don't think of it that way, because I only think about that we've got to do our very best bit. It's only going to happen once. But bell ringing is not as popular as it once was. Sign of the times, a lady bell ringer. So the Central Council of Church Bell Ringers, yes, there is such a thing, launched Ring for the King last fall to recruit tens of thousands of volunteer bell ringers. Cheryl Spriggs answered the call. I've always loved the sound of church bells. Uh, it's a quintessential sound of the English countryside and the towns. And then they put out this appeal and I literally just checked on the internet when the bell practice was and I gave John a ring and he asked me to come along. <laughs> gave and him a ring. Yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> Spriggs started learning what's called change ringing, in which multiple bells are rung in specific sequences. I thought they just played tunes, but you're playing mathematical permutations. This is why it's no small task to train thousands of new bell ringers. As a pupil, John is really good at explaining what you should be doing. He's very clear with his instructions. <laughs> yes, Seth does know all about that. Down like that and relax. Relax, but relax, you're stiff. <laughs> relax. <laughs> Don't it. seem too tense. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Let's just say not everyone is See a natural. <laughs> <laughs> the future king has demonstrated a royal ease with ringing in the past, but he has history. And the bells added their appeal to the general rejoicing. Bells sounded for him when he was born in 1948, as they have to mark weddings, funerals and other important events, including Britain's last coronation. I absolutely love being a part of this British tradition. Um, At St. Leonard's Church in London, it. we met American it's Hannah Richmond, who started bell ringing when she studied abroad in Scotland. Is there a religious component in this for you? For me, no. And I think that that's one of the best parts of it. He can be Muslim, Jewish, Christian, agnostic, atheist, and come ring. Richmond says she finds the whole thing surprisingly meditative. Considering her instrument is a thousand pound piece of bronze swinging overhead. Ringing is a combination of looking at everybody around you, knowing the pattern and also hearing, listening to the bells when they go and, and knowing the tunes. There's more to it than you'd think. Yes, there's a lot going on in the minds of bell ringers. <laughs> this coming Saturday, she'll also have the new king on her mind, proud to play a small role in history. It was a really great opportunity last summer to be able to ring for the Platinum Jubilee. And I also rang in honor of the Queen when she passed. And so now being able to ring for the next coronation, um, I guess I'm just, I'm fitting in as many historical events in one visa as I possibly can. <laughs>